walk you through how to create your own viewfinder used for searching for compositions and as a tool to help you figure out how to locate objects on your picture for drawing. And I'll have a separate video on how to use a viewfinder. And materials that you'll need for this include just a box of cereal, a metal ruler, an X-Acto knife or box cutter, and a self-healing mat or additional scrap cardboard so that you don't cut into your surfaces. And probably either a couple of paper clips or bulldog clips. Here I already have some pre-cut squares that I have. However, I feel like these are a little small for what I'm working on. This one's a little better in terms of the size. This is a piece of mat board that I got at a art and craft store that was one of the cheap ready-made pre-cut mat boards that you can find in the framing section. And you can use this as a whole if your composition is going to be this rectangle. Otherwise, you can cut it here and here to get two similar L-shaped pieces. And this is from some thicker chipboard. And I recommend using something index card size or thicker, but something a little sturdier is probably easier to handle, which is why I'm gonna show you how to do one with just food packaging. This is my apple cinnamon Cheerios that I like to eat in the morning. <laughs> I'm gonna use a Sharpie, you can use a pencil, but for the purposes of the demo, I'm just using a Sharpie so you can see it better. And I've got a couple clips or paper clips that you can use at the end to put it together. And I've got my metal ruler and exacto knife. You just don't want to use a wood or plastic pencil, otherwise the metal from this will jab right into the ruler itself and get rid of the straight edge on your ruler. Okay, so I can either use just one side or if I want to make really big frame, I could take one L shape from this side and do another L shape from this side. But for today, I'm just going to keep it within here. And so what I'm going to do before I even make it is just uh, cut off all the extra bits that I don't need. You want to be very careful about making things square. I have a T-bar ruler, which having a nice right angle is very helpful. Cutting with a metal ruler, I'll start at top. And if you don't cut through right away, you know, don't try to force it to go too fast. So just hold your hand down. and go over as many times as you need. And for me, that was two, but I usually try not to force something like this. Yeah. Okay, so I will get rid of this part and let me go ahead and cut down the rest. Okay. So you might go back and double check to make sure everything is square. I'm using a self-healing mat and what's great about self-healing mats is that you can check for your right corners. And so this is a slightly not square. So I might okay. Now this is a kind of long and skinny rectangle. And so what I'll do is rather than doing an L shape starting right at the top, I want to do two that cuts off each other so that they're even. Uh, for determining how wide to do it, I usually something that I can easily hold on to. And so anything that's maybe an inch and a half to two inches, three inches if you want, but I wouldn't go more than that. So probably one and a half to two inches is, is good. I will go ahead and mark that. And because this is for me, if you want to make it look really nice, so I'm going to mark one and a half inches from each side. So if they see, see what I'm doing, I'm finding one and a half, making a mark, one and a half, making a mark, lining up my ruler. And so I can go back and using my T-square, which is nine degrees, just double check my angles. Make sure those are 90 degree angles. 
And if you don't have a T-square, find something you know is square, like a post-it note or an index card, and just double check the angles. Okay, so now that I have this, just so I know where to cut, I'm gonna just draw like on here, cutting across here and cutting across here. Because otherwise it might be easy to just cut everything and I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna just like cut a strip all the way across because I'm trying to get the L shape. Okay, so here, I don't wanna cut here or here. I'm gonna be cutting this way. I'm gonna flip this over so that it's flatter. If you're cutting in such a way where the whole thing starts to turn, apply pressure to your ruler. Make sure your fingers are standing up so that you're not going to cut it off accidentally. You might go with several shallower cuts, especially if you find that it's, it's rotating or tilting. Now I'm going to go around to the opposite side and I'm going to go to the other side and cut in a similar manner. So starting at this point, not cutting all the way across, but starting here across and now I'm going to cut from this point down to this corner again not all the way across which is a lot easier okay might be easier for me to cut right here all right so I would suggest doing this in pencil because then you can erase these marks, which could be confusing for once you go to use this. Now that you have two L shapes, you can grab your bulldog clips or paper clips. And then what you can do is arrange this to whatever proportions of the composition you'd like to make. So sometimes that might require going back and measuring. So if you know you want a square, for example, you might measure for that. So maybe four and a half by four and a half. So about there. Or I can use this too. So it's always easier maybe to go a little bit smaller so it's a little bit easier to clip. I usually just clip at a point that clips onto both of them so it doesn't move around as much. And try to keep all the corners square. And this one, I will clip here. And now you can hold this up around and look through, try to ignore everything out here and use this as a way to search for a still life composition through your viewfinders. I'll have a video on actually using this next. If you have a sketchbook, you can stand above it and try to make sure that this is perpendicular with your sketchbook and move this around until you find the same proportions as your sketchbook or a frame that you've made for the composition you need. So I usually slide it in and so you could do it at this point. Don't clip it inside your, your view. I can use my viewfinder it back and forth to try to find where I want the composition and something I can do is mark the center points within my frame and sometimes that can help me figure out how to place the objects on my drawings and so holding this here I can test out vertical and horizontal seeing what to include I can stand up and see how that changes the angles and relationships within the viewfinder. So I often pull this back and forth. Okay, so here, I know it's a little blurry. I have gone back and found the center of these measurements so that when I go to draw on my paper for a horizontal sketch of the similar proportion, remember once you change the proportions, these marks become meaningless and you might have to remeasure the center. Some people I know tape thread, like sewing thread across, so that they can use that as a grid to help them translate what they're seeing to the paper. There we go. So I can kind of step back. 
So whether you want that bottle dead center or do you want to put it off to the side a little bit? Some people also divide these into thirds to follow the rule of thirds, and some people use that to place parts of their composition within the crosshairs of the rule of thirds, and sometimes that is said to create more harmony and a sense of balance or asymmetrical balance. Of course, I could also zoom in and crop into some other areas, like here. Or I can move around. So whether you're starting off with doing thumbnails, you can use these and these lines to figure out how to line up your objects on your drawing. So you want to pay attention to both the objects and the negative space. And by using this frame, it kind of helps you to block out all the other extraneous area around you. So if you do have trouble concentrating, Sometimes, at least when starting a work, you might begin by holding a frame while looking at your still life to help you focus on uh, the main parts of your drawing rather than everything.